Hi, and welcome to my channel. In the flight safety video on mid-air collision, we looked at the importance of a good lookout, but I also mentioned an app that I use to detect and avoid other traffic. This video demos that app, and it, although it's aimed at all light aviation flying up to around about 100 knots, it's especially useful for slower traffic. It's called the ADS-B Flight Tracker Light app, and it's available for Android. Everything in this video is recorded from my mobile phone, so it's designed to be viewed on the mobile device you're going to be flying with. So, better go and get that now. So I'll start off by taking you through the graphics so that you've got a good idea of what's going on when we're looking at the scenarios. So starting off with you, you are the aircraft that's showing in the middle of this display. And then out in front of you, you've got what we call the future line. So that yellow line is currently set for two minutes. So if you continue on the same heading and the same speed, that's where you will be in two minutes time. At the top of the display, you've got your track. So that's taken from the GPS track of the device that you're using. And then I've got three distance lines set on mine. So each of those is 3.3 kilometers. I've got three of them. So the outer ring shows uh, 10 kilometers away. So I've also got a proximity line set up. So any aircraft that comes within five kilometers of me will set a audio alert off and it will also start to flash on the display. At the top, I can check to make sure I've still got my internet connection. So that will tell me whether I'm still receiving live tracks or not. And on the top left hand side, that shows me what my battery is currently at and also what the local time is. And then finally, your position is shown at the bottom. So some other lines you can see on there, you can see a green line off to the right hand side. That is a local airfield runway and the blue line with the bars across it. That is the runway center line for each of those two runways. It's useful to know because aircraft lining up for a landing will normally obviously fly along that. Even if it's outside the air traffic zone of the airfield, they'll be lining up on that. So it's a good indication of where an aircraft is likely to be. Let's introduce some other traffic then. So you can see two other aircraft here. Now an aircraft is made up on my display of two distinct parts. First of all, you've got the small arrow. So you've got a small yellow arrow on the target to the top of the display and then the green arrow for the one closer to us. That's where the actual aircraft position is. And then each of those has also got a future line. So that again is set for two minutes at the moment, but the end of that line is where each of those aircraft will be in two minutes time. Each of those aircraft also has two bits of information. So the top information is how far away it is from us in kilometers. And then the second bit of information is what its ground speed is in kilometers an hour. And I also set up my display so that the color of the track changes depending on whether it's climbing, descending or level. So for me, if an aircraft is level, it shows in yellow. If it's descending, it shows in green, indicating it's pointing towards the grass. And if it's climbing, it shows in blue, showing it's climbing towards the blue sky. And then also you'll see some additional information. So I've got set up so that the blue is the coastline. You can also see the class D airspace of Bournemouth to the right hand side and Southampton to the left hand side. And Blatchley Farm is one of the local little small airfields, again, likely to get aircraft coming in and out of there. So I have those displayed. So let's look at some real world scenarios. So this represents the first scenario that we had in the mid-air collision video. We've got an aircraft ahead of us. I'm a passenger in a vehicle driving along the road. So the speeds you've got are reminiscent of what a PPG would be like. As the aircraft comes inside the proximity line, it starts to flash and I get an audio warning. It's muted at the moment. By pressing on to the target, it then shows me what the aircraft is and also shows me where it's been. So I can see from that it was flying in a straight line. So I'm expecting it to continue to fly in a straight line. So my future line and his future line are now crossing. So there's a significant risk of collision if I continue on this heading. I'm going to because I know obviously being in the car, I'm going to go underneath him. In reality, I would now be turning left and trying to spot him. So you see, he just continues to drive down onto a perfect collision. So I would make the assumption that in reality, with him looking out the front and with me looking out the front, we would have seen each other by now. 
But if you remember back to the scenario that we showed, the first scenario of the last video, they managed to get to almost zero feet separation before they saw each other. So in the second scenario from the first video, you remember that there was a fast moving aircraft that passed a paramotor from behind and neither aircraft saw the other until they actually passed each other in the air. So this is a very similar setup. So again, passenger in a vehicle. So we are just following the road and just accepting whatever the intercept from the other aircraft is. So I'm making the assumption that I haven't seen the other aircraft at this point and I'm flying fat, dumb and happy. And there's an aircraft behind me. Once it gets to the trigger line, which for me today is five kilometers, it starts to flash and I'd also get an audio warning if it wasn't on mute. Now at this point I would be turning to try to face the aircraft so that I could see it because I'd seen the threat. However, I'm going to make the assumption that I don't have this working for me and I'm just going to continue to fly in a straight line and see how the scenario plays out. So he's now three kilometers behind me doing 300 kilometers an hour. So he's obviously not a PPL type aircraft, he's something a bit faster than that. So normally I'd be flying along, probably wouldn't be looking over my shoulder very often, probably wouldn't be turning very often to look to see other traffic. And here we get an again an almost perfect intercept purely and simply by chance but without this app i'd have no idea that aircraft was there until it passed me and then in the final scenario so again simulating just flying along all of a sudden i get a pop-up so i've got an aircraft behind me that's all of a sudden at 2.9 kilometers that i wasn't aware of so that's going to provide an audio alert when i look down i'll be able to see what the aircraft is and by pressing on it i'll get more information as well now the reason this aircraft just popped up and didn't trigger at five kilometers was because it was above 5,000 feet which was my height bracket for that so an aircraft descending into the block but inside of five kilometers would show up and probably quite alarming at that point in reality, I'd look at that and work out that it probably wasn't a threat, but I'd probably be looking over my right shoulder just to make sure that it was where I expected it to be and keep an eye on it in case it turned and all of a sudden became a threat to me. So three scenarios there of how I use it in the air. Uh, another really useful feature of it is that if you move away from the airborne display and you move into what is effectively a radar display, you can see lots of traffic. So this is a time lapse. It's sped up 10 times a normal speed. But if you select the radar history to be on, you can see where aircraft fly. You can see where the hotspots are. Areas where there's a lot of low level traffic, areas where there's less low level traffic. And again, you can click on any of these aircraft and you can get an indication of where it's going from, where it's going to, what type of aircraft it is. Until I got this, I had no idea that there were so many training aircraft that fly out of Bournemouth. They operate between Bournemouth and Boscombe Down, and that's the area that I normally fly in. I had absolutely no idea they were there. So I use the ADSB Flight Tracker Light app when I go flying. I use it to build SA on other aircraft, but you do need to be aware of the following. It's not designed for airborne use, although I did work well with the designer to come up with an optimized airborne view that is simple, uh, very straightforward to use, and you don't have to press anything on the screen unless you really want to go in to, to get more information. It's not certified. You do use it at your own risk, and it won't detect all aircraft. So the ADSB Flight Tracker Lite app uses the ADSB Exchange feed. This is a combination of Mode Charlie, Mode Sierra, and ADSB feeds from aircraft which is then received in ground-based stations, it's combined into a single feed and then sent out. Now on this, you can expect to see the vast majority of general aviation and rotary wing aircraft. You'll see some, but not all, microlight aircraft, and you'll see all military aircraft. What you won't see are aircraft that don't have a transmitter on them at all, and you won't see other aircraft that are FLAM only or pilot aware only. You'll only see the aircraft that have either a Mode Charlie, Mode Sierra, or ADSB feed. So if you are going to use the ADSB Flight Tracker Light app, 
uh, I would download it onto the device you're going to use it with in the air and I'd make sure you're fully familiar with it on the ground. As I said before, it's very powerful and there are lots of ways to set it up that make it specific to your requirements. The next video will show you how you go through that. Now, the reason I haven't added it onto this video is because as the program updates and as the app updates, what I want to be able to do is just have a small video to show you the way to optimize any new features that are added to it rather than have to do the whole video again. So follow the link and that will take you to the setup pages. The good news is that a lot of the settings that I use have been now been added to the root program, which means you just have to select my settings and then you can just make some minor changes after that rather than starting the whole thing from scratch. So if you're interested, follow the link to the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you think I've made any mistakes or you've got any of your own top tips of how to optimize it, please put them in the comments below.